Today's the day we interview Philip Chan. <laughs> What's up, okay, Philip? <laughs> I haven't been here for a year. Really? It's been a year. Aeroworks Motorsports Headquarters. We have arrived. We're here in the city of industry next to LA, California at Aeroworks, and I got the man, Philip Chan. It's been a minute, man. What's up, Ray? It's How's been it a going? while. Last yeah. time I seen you, we went to a car show, and you introduced yeah. me to Paul Walker's brother, or you got us backstage to meet Paul Walker's yep. brother and Tyrese Gibson. Dude. It was in a food fest event. You, I just feel like you're everywhere right now. I see, you, I see you popping up. You're having events left and right. I really, I'm excited to see you. I mean, is, do you have more projects going on right now? Well, the next big coming up project will be SEMA for sure. And nice. we have nine cars lining up right now, building for different shops, including two for ourselves. And um, it's going to be cool. So is that the only thing you've been up to? Like what, what, what have you been working on well, this year? Well, there's left and right a lot of different car shows and stuff. We work with different organizations. Um, but the main thing is get the shop operating. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, um, since two years ago, we uh, increased the footage of the size of the shop it's from 5,000 to 10,000 now. And we grow our team from 10 people. Now we have like 16 people team. <laughs> and by doing that, you know, we have to adjust a lot of stuff like staff, uh, workflow, how to manage all these people, where to find a better solution because it used to be one guy, one manager take up everything. Now you have to take control of 16 people. It's a, it's a different story. Because when you up your square footage, you got to up your sales, up your social media, um, up the flow and you know, a lot of stuff follow back up. So now we need more back end to keep track on everything. Cause when you walked in, you see we have like what, 40 cars going on. And <laughs> back in the days we have like literally four cars in the shop that now you have 40 cars. How can you remember every single step that you're not making customer like sad or mad or like pissed at you? Hey, how come you forget this and forget that? You know, you promised me this and that. So exactly. how can we keep track on everything? Mm -hmm. now, that's one thing. And how can you keep track on all the workflow, uh, your staff? And then now it comes into the QCs and everything. Or even though inventory check would be like, I thought we have like five rows yesterday. Well, but it's all gone, you know? Oh man, so, so that new could problems. Be, yeah, those are the big new problems we're facing. Well, we, we figured most of it out already since like two years ago. Mm -hmm. But this is something that we would like to talk about in the AFM conference. Yeah, um, how to conference. You know, the conference is cool, but we have different topics going on. And, you know, we talk about the experience the good side and the bad side, what we fail, what we succeed, and you know how you not to make the same mistake again, basically. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about a lot of things. And you know, you gave me a tour, we were just walking around, we're only in half of the shop. I'm yeah. gonna put some clips in to show people how packed it is right now. We're sitting around five plus million dollars worth of cars here, but this is only half the shop. You have another side correct. that's bigger. Isn't the yeah. square footage bigger? Uh, up, yes, working wise, correct. And that's more completely packed. We couldn't yeah, so, even walk so through there. So this half the shop is more focusing on, I call it dirty stuff. So we do like performance, uh, which we do like intake damper, exhaust, right. like suspension work. We just don't touch the motor. Uh, sometimes because we bring in body keys, like spoiler, you know, lip kit, diffusers. We do all that here. Um, and also we do polishing on this side, some vinyl wrapping. So we keep the dust at this side. Right. Because you know, when you do that, you're going to have dust, like polishing, compound and flying around. So we, we basically break the shop into two, two different spaces. One space is for the dirty side, one space for the clean side. We even have two different AC units. They all both have filters and stuff. Uh, so on that side, it's all nice and clean. Um, we're doing focusing on window tint and PPI and nothing else. You know, and I know your story. That. I remember mm -hmm. when, you, when you stepped on stage last year, you shared your story. Last year, you were talking about uh, the early days, right? When you just yep. got started, you would back in your car because you can only fit half the car inside yeah. your shop at a time or in the garage and then you would back it back out turn it around then work on the other side of the car mm -hmm. now to this it being this packed with this caliber of cars it's it's crazy and i can see that you've been busy in the past year working on this but you just you just doubled the square footage of your shop last year in june yeah. wasn't it in june and we filled it up two months later how so that's something we'll talk about at the conference, you know, how can you ah, get more sales? There you go. And then, if you didn't well, get your tickets, get your tickets. That's yeah. what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something, you know, a lot of people I keep asking me the same questions. So how can you get in this market? How can you get these cars? All we get is maybe a Tesla. And we yeah. work on our Hondas, Toyotas, and all regular daily basis cars, and sometimes BMW, Mercedes, Audis, but 
They say, I want to get some more Porsche. I want to get some more um, like, you know, supercar market. But I'll be honest, those supercars, crazy cars like Collins, like Bentley, all those, uh, even if you charge over 10 grand, like 15 grand or something, you don't make as much as money compared to doing Teslas and like, mm -hmm. like regular cars. But it's a really good marketing tool because if you'll be able to work on Lamborghini or Bugatti and stuff, right. which means your, your skill set, your, your shop level is up here. You need those cars here and there to bring in the image of the, well, the, to bring up your image as a shop. So basically you want to let people know we are qualified and we have been doing all this kind of car. So don't worry, you're safe to bring in any car that you want me to do and work on it. And also we do like different stuff. Like I said, we do like performance, we do like wrapping, we do like, you know, ceramic coating, everything. So we're not trying to lose any sales. Yeah. So the key thing is sometimes a lot of people focusing on, okay, we're a tint shop, we only do tint. Now we try to introduce PPF, but there's a lot of different people and a lot of different services that people are asking or looking for. So right. open up your mind, open up your, your eyes, um, look at your market, you know, attend car shows, attend events and stuff like that. Talk to people and see how they do their cars and see what do they need. Oh, this guy wants decals. Oh, okay, well, that guy's looking for wheels and tires. That guy want to like color code his wheels. That guy want different color calipers right. and stuff like that. So that's something, you know what? Can I add it to my surface? If I cannot do it myself or my staff mm -hmm. can do it, can I find a subcontractor? Can I find a, a reputable shop around us can do that kind of surfaces? So all we always talk about is your average ticket price. So mm -hmm. if you can surface based on your shop size, let's say I've only had one bay, small shop, one man team, right? If I can only bring in 10 cars a month, work on it, like basically that. And if your average ticket price is 500 bucks, Tint, you know, mm -hmm. my average ticket price is like 500 bucks. Compared to that, you only have 5,000 revenues, right? Right. But if you can raise it up to, let's say, I, I throw in a full front, like let's say on the low side, two grand, a full front. and that's $2,500. Now your revenue becomes like 25 grand. So what if you can do a full pop? Well, how about power coating wheels, d chrome, stuff like this, a full PPF and, ten, and ceramic coating, mm -hmm. 10K range. So you'd be like, shit, it could be like $100,000 on spot like that, just on that there you go. 10 customers, right? So this is how you can raise up your average ticket, but you can't just sell, I want to sell $10,000 <clears> 10. It's not even possible. You're you, not realistic. You lean in with the first, that first core offer and then you upsell Correct. and you, I love, I love you upsell, the way. You bring in more people and you open the market. People be like, oh yeah, I just go to Ray or Philip or anyone else. I can get right. all my stuff done. I can make my car just look like that car. Right. You know, so sometimes you have to be attending different car shows, event, cars and coffee, just to like open your eyes, no more people. And it's always good to have your car kind of fixed up, put some products on your own that shows. If you're selling PPF, doesn't mean you have to put like clear PPF. You could put matte PPF or color yeah. PPF or something that it would stands out. I got people asking me, you saw my truck where we just have a brand new video coming up, by the way, Dino Prism purple, <laughs> blue color. Absolutely, Tundra. it's, it's and amazing. I got stopped every time at gas station. What is this? I never send this on a car. That's something you want to create a topic. People talk about it. Want to have a conversation with you. That's one thing you get, not just on the social media side, but sometimes in person, the physical contact is very strong compared to looking at video because you're doing social media, but there's like another hundred people doing social media. They could just do it like this and then, you know, they don't look at your post. It could be. If it's like uh, same old tint, same old PPF, same old wrap, they just pass by. Oh, that's a cool color. I might stop and look at it. But in person, it's a, a huge impact when you have something strong to show mm -hmm. people at the show, at the cost and coffee, even going out to have a, um, you know, a drink or something, you know, people see, they want to see, hey, what's, what's this? You know, put your logo on your car, stuff like this. And that's one way to start pushing because social media is worldwide. They know you, but they may not be your customer because they could be in East Coast, could be in, not in, even in U.S. They see your right. stuff, they like you, but they can't get it from you. So in our surface, your local business is where the market is. People pay money and go to you. So attend those local events, attend those local stuff to open up your local market. Let me ask you about that because it's clear you, you're an absolute master of branding. But what I've learned, uh, what I've learned about you over the years is that you, you know how to build relationships. You know how to build value. You know how to connect. Like, how do you get some of these connections? Not only did you have like backstage access to, to, to one of the biggest up and coming car meets here in LA or the car events, right? Mm -hmm. But you also had a big Nissan event here. Like, how do you get connected with these yeah, people? We do. So what we do is we have 
really good like uh, so let's say for example you buy film from this supplier this supplier most people just walk in there i just want to get this and buy done deal but no i talk to them talk to the owner speak with them and see what kind of stuff you can work out sometimes because whoever buy film from them um they probably need some other stuff from you you know so you can talk to them and talk to the supplier so let's say I built my relationship with my supplier and when they have customers looking for jobs, looking for people, they refer to you because they know, oh, that's the guy I can trust. So first step is talk to those people. Second step is, you know, when you attend more car shows event or what we do is we do, uh, we have a pretty big group here, it's called Peers Group and it's a nonprofit um, um, group that we help out people. Mm -hmm. So we do charity stuff all the time. And, we support the group, we support the community. So that's one way to open up the market and telling people that we don't just make money, but we use some of the money to help other society here. Uh, we have like pest event, a homeless event, like uh, kids back to wow. school, wow, and backpack event, all this kind of stuff. So that opens up the market, you know, you're trying to create a good image of the shop. You know, like back in the days, uh, people think about car guys are bad guys. Right? Yeah. We're trying to change the image. Car guys could be good guys, but you have to actually do the actions and do it and help out people. And that's one way to open the market. Now, you have connections with, because during those events, it attracts like manufacturers, like, mm -hmm. like Nissan, Toyotas, or, like, or maybe like BMWs, whatever, all this like, they want to chip in because they want to have a good image too. So now it's about connections. Let's say, hey, Ray, AFM, are you guys interested in sponsoring this this little charity event is gonna you have a booth here oh, or stuff like that something. so yeah. yeah so we can be, be part of it together and we open the market so people more people knows about you guys not just the car guys right so all this charity event where people have good heart they want to be there they want to see some cars and do some good you know to the to the people around us so that's one way to open up and get into that and now you talk to different manufacturers like porsches and stuff dealership as well too you know when you buy a part from dealership talk to them you know, right. uh, make connection with the, many, uh, with the dealership, maybe not the owner, but maybe the general manager, right? Talk mm -hmm. to them, talk to the service manager when you buy parts and tell them, hey, we have a shop here and then create contents. Hey, you know what? Let's do a cross and coffee. Let's do like a weekend event at their place or at our place. You know, that's how to like open up your market a lot better on that hey, side. You said something about really spending time with the customers, communicating with them. So you're saying you don't just rush them off the phone. You don't try and push them out the shop. No, so <laughs> when people ask for quote and stuff, we always would like them. Uh, we still give a quote, but we don't just like, all right, here you go, 5,000. Here you go, yeah, 1,000. Yeah. Because you, first of all, you have to um, um, separate you and the regular shops out there, right? Because we do good work. You know, yeah, we use good film. And we do we provide the best service here so you have to educate a customer in a first hand because a lot of people they thought oh oh yeah i thought you sell this film we use the same film exactly. that is the same there's a difference you know even though intent right that guy could be a couple of speck of dust it's okay but not for us right yeah that guy could have a finger down there and push it down there's a mark it's okay but it's not okay for us so and you know i ask right there seems to be this notion in our industry that's kind of an old school old style notion that you got to get people you, you know, you got to get them off. You got to really get them off the phone faster. You got to you don't spend too much time with them. And nowadays, it's, there's definitely a shift, right? If, if you want people to come in and purchase $10,000 worth of stuff, $15,000 worth of stuff, it's not going to happen in 30 minutes. It's, no. Sometimes it takes a couple hours, right? Yeah. Like, can you, like, for example, we're sitting around some crazy cars. This is a half million dollar car. There's a, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's a three million, three and a half million dollar Bugatti mm -hmm. back there. Like, how long are your conversations with that guy? Compared so to a first of all, right? Um, when you actually sell your product and services, don't just focus on selling, because people yeah. get pushed out. When you walk into a, let's say you're looking for a pants or a t-shirt. When you walk into a store, people comes up, hey, how can I help you? Um, you know, try to sell you lots. Oh, you should, you should get this, you should get that. It kind of pushes you up. Yeah, just leave it alone. You know, so. But when they are asking for something, they have a buying signal. So catch that, right? And. I create conversation with customer and talk to them and understand where they're coming from. The first step, I'll be like, hey, cool, that's a cool car. You know, it's been hard to get that car. Did you pay markup? So create conversation first, right? Yeah, build so a rapport. Create some, yeah, become like a little bit friendly. Talk, don't talk about like, you should buy this, buy that, you know? No, don't do that, you know? Talk about it, how'd you get that? Did you lease the car, did you buy the car? Um, 
did you have like a huge markup? Did you pay high MSRP? Exactly. Oh, you got lucky, you know, that's a cool car. Even if we markup, it's worth it. You know, the car is blah, blah, blah. So create a conversation first, right? First step. Second step is during the conversation, I'm fishing out base, right? If he bought the car, cool, I know what to do. If he leased the car, cool. If he leased the car, I'm not gonna sell him full PPM. He's gonna be like, yeah, that guy just getting, getting me spend all the money. Yeah. I'm gonna walk out. Yeah, exactly. But if he, if he buy the car, be like, oh shit, that's a custom color. How much time you wait? 18 months? God damn, you gotta protect that thing. And then that's how you create content, right? So you sometimes, besides, be, be, before you sell, you compliment, like you compliment the car, compliment the, the exactly. customers. You really have good taste, dude. I really like that, you know. I think it would be great if you have this product too. Yeah. Start selling like that, right? So you give customers what they need. You don't hard sell them what they don't need because exactly. they get offense. Sometimes they got back off, you know. Dude, I'll think about it. Yeah, when they say, I'll think about work. it, yeah. you, know, you know how many times they said, when I think about it, how many times we actually think about it. <laughs> they actually just keep, they tell you the thing about it, which means they don't want it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't hard selling it. I've so always said, I mean, you know, you know my, my, my role in this industry, I spend all my time consulting or, or people hire my team for sales and marketing services. And, um, you know, I always tell people when the price comes out, what happens after that is just a reflection on how well you did before the price came out. Correct. Did you build enough rapport? Did you build value? Did you did, did you make the complex simple for them? Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to talk about that on stage at the conference this year. I'm going to have a major part talking about building value in sales and marketing. Uh, but I actually want to transition and talk about your presentation because this is our second conference. Mm -hmm. um, we're already going to beat the record that we set last year. We had about 170 people in attendance That's last awesome. year. Now we're, we're, we're already on track to beat that. And, um, you know, we have two days this year. We have three times the size. It's a massive room in a better location inside Resorts World. What are you going to talk about without giving away too much? What well, are you going to talk about? Like I said, uh, when we talk about, be, well, last year we talked about how can I from like a couple hundred square foot to like, like a couple thousand or 10,000 square foot. Um, and now I'm going to talk about not just the size of the shop, but the sales, the call you pull in, the teams and stuff, how to nice. operate it. Nice. And a key thing is, should I expand my shop? A lot of people ask me, we maxed out, uh, we packed, we're booked, and I think 5,000 or 3,000 is not enough. I want to go bigger and bigger, 10, 15, 20,000 square foot. Right. But one thing is, look at your numbers. A lot of people don't look at the numbers. They thought they're doing well, but they don't calculate numbers. They mm -hmm. thought they're making money, but at the end, after paying all this, Taxes here, taxes there, fees, insurance, workers' mm -hmm. comp, everything, insurance, and you'll be like, I thought we're making quite a bit, but how come, you know, we only get the end of the year after all this deduction and stuff? So, um, what's the right time to expand, right? Um, mm -hmm. What's a good time to expand, and what is a good way to expand? Should we expand? You know, are you ready for expansion, right? Um, and that is a huge topic because are you be able to handle that many customers? You know, even if a right, big shop right. full of 40 cars, can you eat them all? Because if you, if you keep backtracking, keep chasing, your, your staff will get tiring, right? First of all, or your customer will be like, hey, I thought you said three days we done, now it's been six, what's going on my car? Or you have like, um, um, maybe money issues, right? Now you have a huge team, huge overhead, and you need more turnaround money. Right, you lot right. more money <clears throat> to turn around. And are you ready for that? So. Sometimes I'll be honest, um, we're making even more money compared to now. Like a 5,000 square feet were more profitable than 10,000 10, square feet. Why? Because I was having a, a 10 people staff, right, right. 5,000 uh, 5, square feet, full on jobs in and out all the time. But at the same time, when you double that size, right? Are you going to have like 30 employees? Yeah. And even you want to hire 30 employees, can you sure you can have 30 employees up to your standard? Right. Do you have enough time to train them all? And now, before, the, before that, can I pull in three times more or double size of my, a double of my sales? You know, that comes in the factor. What's a good size for your operation? Um, sometimes it's not about you, it's about the economic, right? Mm -hmm. And about uh, shortage of the car sometimes, right? Or sometimes maybe the quality issues, hey, that one week I'm supposed to have like six Tesla comes in. They all delayed it. Mm. I got like six cancellation on, on the course. That so sucks. how am I going to pay my staff? Are you ready for that? So that's something we can talk about. Uh, not deep right now, but it's just something that we talked about <laughs> it um, because you know I've been through it and how can I achieve that and open up my market? And when you walk in, it's not empty. 
right? Mm -hmm. I filled up my shop and how can I manage, utilize some of the service and stuff to, um, to pull a longer period of time of projects here. So we have like calls in and out daily basis and weekly basis. And this cost might sit here for over the week or over two weeks or a month or two months projects. So how can we use some of those to pay for your expenses and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. To maintain your team. Because when you have a big team, I don't have only a PPF installer or tenor. I have a two front office, three front office. I got two social media team, and I got five people in detail team helping me wash car, detail car, prep it, um, clean all up and stuff like that. And we have PPF staff, tent staff, and rep staff, and mechanic team too. So if I only have one PPF job, like service, right. I can't afford having a full-time mechanic here. So now I've got to bring in some mechanical work and some vinyl wrap stuff to support that person. So um, how to structure your shop, how to structure a team, that's one really key thing you want to talk about that as well too. And Question about that. So when do you feel, what are some indicators that someone is ready, a business owner, maybe a two, three man team, all the above, what, what are some indicators that, that you can tell when someone is ready to start scaling? Yes. So before they start scaling up, I want them and I want to listen to them first, right? I want to talk to these people. Hey, um, what are you, um, what's your numbers like, right? And how many cars you're putting out? And what's your average job takes your guys to do it? Right, And right, how's right. your failure rate? Because I have people who be uh, busy QC. all day. But then, um, what have you done today? Well, we have one come back fixing this panel and uh, we have one job and we finished that full run in, in a day and then it went out. But we're packed, so be like, so first of all, why are you wasting time on doing all this quality control in QC? Yeah. Oh, shit. Right? Oh, so that cuts you another 25% of time, right? So now when you come back, okay, so um, how long it takes you to fully finish for front? Well, it takes my guy like seven, eight hours. Mm, That's your yeah. problem. Yeah. Take and our they're classes. four weeks out. And they're four yeah. weeks out or three Take weeks out. Take our classes. Take our stuff because I'm going to teach you how to do that in two and a half hours. Oh, shit. So before you expand your square footage, before you expand your team, uh, sometimes it's about a lot of stuff, your pay structure. Right, right. How right. you keep your guys, how you keep your guys motivated. That's one key thing. Well, my guy's just taking a lot of time, but he's doing an okay job. But, mm -hmm. but if you change your pay structure, he could be more uh, uh, energized. Oh, I want to do more, I want to do more yeah, money. Yeah, I feel like a lot of business owners in our industry, they're running with the wrong business model. Because yes. part of the business model is, you know, sometimes people are, oh, I just need to, you know, get another installer. But in reality, you know, maybe you need to stop doing sales mm -hmm. and maybe you need to put, put a better compensation plan together to really attract a great salesperson. So you can stop doing that and you can put more of your energy into training your installer. Yep. Get them down to seven hours, down to five Correct. hours, or take some auto mastery training, right? So I feel like the business model and, and their next five moves, if they can get clarity on the next five moves, mm -hmm. it's going to be so much easier for them to like really scale. Last time, scale. there was a guy, uh, John, that came to our classes last time. Right, right. I asked him, mm -hmm. oh, well, um, my food front, I asked him how much time you take your food front. Usually like six hours, up to eight hours, because sometimes they wait for it. the other guy to... So there's two guys team and right. uh, he's on the phone sometimes and stuff like that on emails with customers. I got to help. I got to wait for him to come back so I can help me lay the bumper, lay the hood, stuff like that. I'm like, why don't you do it yourself? Well, how can I do that? Well, I'm going to teach you. <laughs> so I'll teach him how to do solo on the hood, solo on go. the bumper and stuff. And I mean, our classes are not the cheapest, but it's the most valuable stuff. Absolutely. And he called me back a week after. Hey, Phil, thank you for your classes. I made money back already there in it is. one week. He took a four days class, he's like, I make my money back in a week. In a couple of grand, I make it back right away. Yeah, because he doesn't yeah. have to wait for another person now, and his job comes out better, and then he could do it fast, like cut his time in half. So that's something, instead of investing into you know, hiring more people, right. invest your money on train your staff, or even buy them the right tools, you know, get them a better environment, better lighting, better flooring, you know, better tools, and, a bit of software or stuff like that. Put the money in it. Stop, stop wasting money buying a fancy car. You know that may help you, but that doesn't help your team. The team just think about you making too much money. Where's my money? Oh, big time! Instead you of know, taking it home, you got to give it back to the business. Correct. You got to give we, some back. We help our guys buy stuff, like toolboxes. We help them like yeah. buying tools and stuff, yeah. left and right. Offer them the best services here. You know, best products and best environment here. Yeah, there's. I definitely. 
I've spoken with over a thousand business owners inside mm -hmm. this industry. I mean, it's a daily basis for me. That's yeah. my that's my job. And one of the big things I've noticed is, is there's barriers that people hit, and it, it's a sticking point. It's consistent. It's not something that has happened one time. It's like I've, I've I know personally dozens of people who've gotten stuck at the twenty five thousand per month barrier mm -hmm. as a one man one man army. A lot of uh, um, uh, freelancers, right? A lot of subcontractors get stuck there, and then the fifty thousand per month mark there, because mm -hmm. around the half a million a year mark, you can't. You can't turn your 80 hour work week into a hundred hour work week and get a better return. You get diminishing results. You, you know, your creativity is gone. Your patience is gone. Instead of trying to patiently teach your new hire how to do something, you're just like, oh, just let me do it real quick because it's faster. And you know, that's not going to duplicate. That's not going to expand your time. So, you know, and then, then there's the 80,000. That's a big one too. Trying to get to your first six figure month. There's another, uh, another barrier there. But at some point you got to stop prioritizing. This is something that, that uh, has resonated with, with several people. At some point, you got to stop prioritizing, okay, what's going to make more money? Instead yeah. of saying, what's going to make more money, you got to say, what's going to give me more time? Because you getting your time back, yeah, yeah immediately you're not going to increase revenue. That is something we're going to talk about in a, in a conference as well, too, is... That's exciting. So we do offer a lot of different services we talked about earlier. Um, we bring them in, but we don't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say a mechanic, our vinyl wrapping, not making as much as money. So we push them away. Not push them away, but we we postpone it later. So right, yeah, right. PPF bring it in, bring it in, right? Vinyl wrap, uh, yeah, we have an opening in the, maybe the third week of this month. Oh, that's so okay. So we don't say no to it, but we keep the customers Cause, because you know, nowadays, I'm pretty sure you don't have only one car in your family, right? You have two, three, four, yep. five cars. So you could wait for a little bit, right? So as long as you can get, you can provide the customers a good service, a good products out there, uh, they could wait, you know, just talk to them, you know, good things got to wait, right? You know, it's like a brand new car. You know, you expect, I could walk into a Porsche dealership and find the color that I want. Right. If you want it, you got to wait for it. You got to order it. So that's one thing to, to keep the customers. And so that way, how to maintain, to adjust the team and the structures again, you know, to build the structures. How can I get this money to pay for this team and that team and that team? So we cut about, we we'll talk about a structure. What do you need for your team? What do you need for your shop? I can't wait. You know, so how many people should I hire? You know, what kind of stuff should I spend? And are you doing the right marketing? Are you seeing what's happening with your marketing? People sometimes just, oh yeah, I spend a thousand on Yelp, a thousand on, on Google, a thousand on, on Facebook and so and so and so. But did you actually get the feedback from customers? Where are they from? Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, yeah, they don't even ask. It's big. You know, Yelp is big first. I spend like almost 4,000 a month on Yelp. But $4,000 in Texas may not work. Right. In Yelp, you right. know, in Yelp might be Twitter better. Maybe Facebook is better. Maybe something else is better. Exactly. Maybe TikTok is better. So you have to understand your market, do your research, and talk to your customer, get feedback from customer that, hey, how'd you learn from us? You know, how'd you uh, how'd you hear about us? Exactly. Where you came from, and get those leads. So what we would do is we create a spreadsheet with our sales, and I can always go back and we can talk about it in, in the conference too. How can I break it apart and see all my leads is when my calendar is more empty? Hey, we should maybe give this guy this kind of try to get them in. There you go. So we have like 20 leads, 30 leads a day, or even five. So we did the job, but never get back to us. I would ask my guy, so what's the reason he's not coming? Right. So I got to chase back, you know, so don't lose your sales, don't lose your lead. You know, it'd be like, hey, so, you know, he talked to 10 customers and zero come in. I want to know why, where are they from? Uh, is it because of pricing, products, service, lead time? What's going on? I know I want to know the answer. Maybe the marketing, or maybe well, that shop is offering cheap prices. It happens too. Like the economics not as great lately, and then there's people doing crazy prices out there. Oh, they use this film. We use that too. I'll talk to my supplier. Right. My supplier talk to them. Hey, I know you're new. Uh, maybe you're making five hundred bucks, but that's not right because you have no room to fix your your error after that. It's a man. It's a big one. You're making my mind race right now because I can't tell you how many conversations I've had uh, specifically about marketing, in the aspect of Bray. I don't know where my money's going. Well, how? Okay, you spent five grand last month. How many leads came in? I don't know. My marketer said it's doing okay. My marketer said it's doing okay. Numbers don't lie. If you know exactly, yep. if, if you put one dollar in, and you know for sure that one dollar in got you a customer or maybe two customers, well, great, then you put more dollars in. But if you're guessing or you feel like it's working, you think it's working, I mean, you're heading you're head to go right off of a cliff, right? So something that I've always implemented was, look, you got to get monthly reports. Mm -hmm. And that's what my team does. We always get monthly reports. You have to have a communication of how many leads came in, how, exactly how much should I spend, and how much did you spend? What's your cost per lead exactly? Yeah. You know? So 
talking about that, uh, mm -hmm. for a small scale, small sizes of the shop, um, I used to do like monthly and stuff like that. Right. But for me, because we have a bigger team now, bigger overhead and stuff, I changed it to weekly. Nice. There so it is. Week, I have a weekly goal. I have to chase that goal because if I'm under a certain amount, I'm toast. I've got to think of my saving and pay for the, the, the payroll right, and everything. Right, right. So I have to make sure my, my weekly goal is good because you don't want to be like, oh shit, last month we lost, what, 30 grand? Too I'm going to chase it back. Well, lost 30 grand doesn't mean you're going to bring 30 grand of sales. That's your profit. Oh. So you got times four. So I got to bring in another 120 grand of sales to make up for that 30 grand. And that helps you yes. identify problems before it turns into a disaster because you're Correct. looking at it weekly. Because if I lost, wow. if, if I lost 10K last month, which means, we we'll talk about it too, you have this four fact, right? There's, there's your material and there's your labor and there's your overhead and there's your profit. So got it. in theory, you know, 25% around there, numbers can play around there, from five some, to 25%, that's right? That's very so similar to what Mike Norton talks just, about too. Yeah, so that's some, something simple that I have the four facts, you know? So in, if I want to make that $1, it doesn't mean I have to bring one dollar sales. I gotta bring four dollar sales. Yeah, yeah. If I want to make ten grand, I gotta bring forty grand mm -hmm. sales. So which means if I lost ten grand last one last month, I gotta bring another forty grand sales to make up for that ten grand. Yeah, you get tracking that? the so, numbers. Tracking so the tracking numbers. numbers is very important. So sometimes we're like, no, I gotta stand my prices three thousand, three thousand. I'm not going anywhere. But then you'll be like, oh shit, you know that's something I lost money for. So maybe occasionally look at your schedule, look at your calendar. Maybe you have to do like a little, that's why seafood market, stock market go like this, right? They're not set all the time because sometimes when it's less, there's less people looking for stuff, right. um, there's less demand. You got to throw in a little bit, not like crazy, maybe five, 10 percent off to fill up your schedule. So making sure you're OK with that month, you're OK with that week. You know, there's a, I'm excited for your presentation. Mm -hmm. You were a crowd favorite last year, and I'm excited to see what you say this year. I think yeah. that we got a really good taste of it now, but you're always busy at SEMA. Like you, we, we've been talking a lot about the Autofilm Growth Conference. It's two days this year. It's two days right before SEMA. So we end on a Monday. SEMA starts on a Tuesday. What do you have planned at SEMA this year? You're always doing something. So this year, same thing. I'm going to do a little bit of quick demos here and there for the um, for stack as well, but also we were visiting, I'll be visiting different suppliers, like different film nice. suppliers, talk to them, and um, we work with, you know, manufacturers as well, doing R&D, so sometimes we test film for like, different manufacturers, doing some changes, uh, having some new products coming out, so that's something exciting to, to, to see. That's it. gonna be cool. Yeah. So you're gonna be a part of the product releases? Yeah. Any like little hint, anything you can, or well, we have to it's, wait? Well, it's on the film industry as well too, so there's some new products, and also, uh, at the same time, we have like new detail product launching as well too. Um, that's a, that's so working cool. on focusing on high end detailing, uh, working on high end cars, and the product's gonna help the the shops making more money, especially. That's cool. Yeah. The film, the industry's blowing up. There's new products every single year. Consumers yep. demand is skyrocketing. Um, now you, you're also gonna have your own booth at our conference. Yes. That's the first time. Like, what's what? Tell me more about that because, like, tell me about the company. How did the brand come about? Like. So this is a brand that we've been having for the past five years, but usually it's selling to our local customers. And a lot of people ask us, you know, after I get the job done from you, uh, either ceramic coating, either vinyl wrapping or PPF, how can we maintain it? A lot of people have the questions. So can I wash my car? How can I wash my car? Um, who should touch my car? What kind of products should I use? So there's so many different products out there. Sometimes it could be very confusing. like. Well, I go on this website and it have like 10 different wash. Exactly. So I go to that website, confusing. there's like five different spray that make them Here, like headache. Let's bring it, because actually I asked Philip to, to, to pull them into the video because I wanted to show it. This, look at the design here. You, so this is only two of the products and we have eight total. I'm not going to show them all right now. Um, but this is the two like product that. that it works really well. There it is right there. So yeah, we have all the way from cleaning, prepping, finishing, and protecting. Mm -hmm. So we, we have all the way from car wash, uh, detail supply, um, sealant protection, glass cleaner, rubber cleaner, interior cleaner, um, so and so. Right. Um, so we have people keep asking, or shop asks us, what do you use, you know, on all your customers' cars? And, you know, sometimes they say, oh, I just buy something off from AutoZone or from eBay, from Walmart. But those are okay brand, but they're not, built or made for the car we do. They're right, not made for right, like right. Porsches, they're made for like 
Corolla or Camry or something like that, you know, you, what should I use on my Lambo? What should I use on my Ferrari, Bugatti or something like that? So this That's is a product branding. that That's we spent branding. years with uh, chemistry, uh, with a supplier to build, and everything's built in the US by the way. Um, That's cool. Everything's built in the US, up to the spec, and everything's proven, even the label sticker is waterproof and so and so. So um, these products are a proven water-based product, pH neutral, so it's not gonna damage your paint, it's not gonna damage your car, and it's not gonna leave residue on your car. So we're gonna launch it, we're gonna help the detail shop to fix their problem, um, you know, solve their headache, and also at the same time, they can resell our products. So basically you can, it's like, one stone, two birds, you know, it's just like- That's cool. You know, That's you can awesome. make money and you can help solving your problem. I, you know, you mentioned this before about a year ago and I never knew that, just, I never knew the store behind it. So it's Detailers Innovation, if anybody wants to check it out. Yep. Website looks great, the branding is great. This is awesome. So now this this one right here in, in particular. This is got a hydro seal. Hydro so seal. This one is to seal your products and it it's got the hydrophobic uh, particles inside. So a lot of people, you know, now the, the new PP have come with all these top coat and whatever hydrophobic, right. but they don't right. last forever. You have to maintain this water I use. So this is something after you wash your car, spray and wipe and that's it. And it helps to protect it, make it more slippery, more slick. And at the same time, it keeps the hydrophobic last a lot longer. That's awesome. So even a car wash soap has hydrophobic particle inside. So and even from wash to seal, uh, it helps your hydrophobic last longer and easy to clean afterwards too. You know, I like the way that we have the set up this year. So at the conference where you're gonna have your booth, we have uh, three times the size. And I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show you after, after we're done talking here on, on the interview. But as soon as someone registers, you're gonna, they're gonna walk straight into mm -hmm. the, the, the welcome room. It's the sponsorship yep. room. It's also where we have a bunch of coffee and tea. Coffee and tea is gonna be in the middle and there's gonna be sponsors all around. Mm -hmm. We're gonna announce the sponsors very soon or maybe we announced it by the time, by yeah. the time uh, this is here. I can tell you a couple of them. Tint Wiz is our diamond sponsor. So yep. Tint Wiz is gonna be throughout the whole entire conference. Uh, STEC, STEC is, uh, is confirmed as a, as a sponsor as yep. well. I know that you're close with STEC as well. So thank you guys. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be exciting. We're gonna talk more about some of the sponsors. MediaTune, my marketing agency, mainly focuses on this industry in flat glass. We're gonna, we're gonna have our booth. Uh, Mike Norn should have his booth, make more money. So we got, we got quite a bit coming out guys. But um, going back to it, they funnel in there. And then at 10 o'clock on the dot, they walk through this massive curtain, it's like 16 foot uh, big curtain. They walk into the training room. So the sponsorship room where we also have lunch and breakfast mm -hmm. is gonna be separate from the training room. And that stage is big this year. Yeah. That stage is gonna be big I this year. I saw your, um, your, your, your floor plan, your floor plan. It's gonna be good, yeah. it's gonna be good. So any, any, anything you wanna mention about the conference? Who should go to the conference? Well, I would say anything, anyone that half a shop Go. Your whole room is shaking. Whatever cars out there, I, yeah, I can, I can feel the horsepower. <laughs> I can feel the horsepower. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I would say, business owners that you know in the similar industry, right? Performance, wrap, PPF, tent industry should come to the conference because this is going to help you grow a business, uh, not on the sizes, but you know on your numbers. How can make more money? How be more efficient? Um, how can you keep your guys? You right, know, right. How you how you find your talent? How you keep the talent? So that's something. How you bring more sales in? You know, there's a lot of how you do marketing. How do you read your numbers? So all this is very very important, and this is what we're working hard for all these years, and and basically bring money on the table for you. Yeah, I mean, and how do you? If, or if you even want to be a want to be a, uh, if you're a subcontractor install and you have your interest on opening a new shop stuff like that, we can help you out yes. with that. Every mobile detail should show up. Yeah. Every subcontractor, every one man person yeah. should especially show up because yeah. a lot of the time you're, you're this far away from truly breaking past and, and getting 50% more revenue every yeah. month or, ca or cash flow or maybe, maybe doubling it. Maybe you don't want to be a million dollar company. Or even if you're not even a business owner or even not in the industry, but you see our advertising, you see our stuff, you just want to build a business and make some money. Just one idea away. And most as, long as, you do, you, as long as you want to get out of your nine to five jobs and do something better, come to us. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I appreciate you, man. We got to do this again. I got to come back sooner. Yeah. I'm not going to wait a year next time. You have to come time. back more often, but I, I see you have you a baby three coming months. up, so I don't know <laughs> when's the next time I'm going to see you, but my son just turned one. And December? I don't know how much work it's going to be. December. We got to do Yours is December, yeah. December sometime. No, no. Yours is November. My baby's November, but we got to, we have, we have something coming up in, no, in December, December right? so I think I'll see you then. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. All right.